a long, long time ago, in the last millennium, in fact, humans used primitive methods of entertainment and communication. The modern day millennial is completely unrecognisable to their 1990s ancestors. Just a really quick video today, I'm going to talk to you about how to get internet access when you are on a narrow boat. If you are in a marina or on a residential mooring it's pretty simple, you can usually get a phone line and then you get Wi-Fi in pretty much the same way as you do in a house. Or if you're in a marina, the marina office or if there's a shop on site will usually have internet access. But obviously if you're out cruising you can't plug in so you're going to have to do something else to get online. The best way to do this will really depend on how often you're going to be using the internet and the kind of things you're going to be using it for. If you're just pinging out the odd email or posting a few selfies onto Instagram, you could probably get away with just using your data on your mobile phone. But if you're a more heavy user or you need a bigger screen or are relying on internet access for work, then you're going to have to think about doing something a bit different. A lot of people will use local coffee shops, cafes. This isn't always convenient, so here are the three main ways to get internet inside your narrowboat. If you've got good data allowance on your mobile phone contract, then you can use the phone as a personal hotspot, also known as tethering, where basically you turn the phone into a Wi-Fi hotspot and you can connect all of your other devices that way and get online. I don't use my iPads or my laptop very much so this is my preferred method and I have quite a generous data allowance for tethering each month so I never have to worry about going over my limit. I believe also that a lot of providers now will allow you to tether things like Netflix without any extra data costs so that's a really good option and um, one of the main reasons that I really like this method is that I've only got one bill every month for all of my mobile phone and my internet access but if you haven't got that much data allowance or you can't be bothered to set the phone up as a hotspot every time you want to get on the internet you've always got the old-fashioned option of a dongle and it basically looks like a USB stick. You plug it into your laptop. There will be an amount of data on there based on how much you've paid and you can use that to get online. That's a great option if you're only gonna be using a laptop, but it's no good for tablets or other devices which haven't got a USB port. So a better option for you then is a wireless internet hub. And that'll be a box which is a bit bigger but works in exactly the same way as your mobile phone. It will have a SIM card in there and you can use that to wirelessly connect your devices. The prices for these devices and the data packages can vary a lot. So it really does pay to shop around and get the best deal for what you need to do yourself. And another big consideration is how much network coverage you're actually gonna get. When network providers claim to cover 99% of the country with 4G or 3G, what they actually mean is that they cover 99% of houses. A lot of the time, even when I'm in central London, I can't get 4G on my phone. Um, many places on the canal network, especially in rural areas, won't have as good coverage as more densely populated places. And the type of boat that you have as well will affect the coverage that you get. Before I bought my boat, I'd read that I wouldn't be able to get any phone signal at all because the boat is made out of steel. So when I came and viewed the boat, I actually got my phone out and made sure that I could get 4G and I could go on Facebook and do all of those things before I even considered putting in an offer. I think the big advantage that I've got on my boat is that I've got really big windows. I've been on other people's boats who've only got tiny little portholes and I can't get any phone signal at all. So I guess really the moral of this video is don't be an internet junkie like I am, but if you must be then shop around for the best method and the best network and accept that sometimes you're going to have to put the iPad down and go and live in the real world as it once was many many years ago apparently some woman on the internet said that that was one of the reasons for buying a boat 
don't forget to subscribe so you can use some of your hard-earned data on looking at me and Mr Monty. We will see you all again very, very soon. Bye!